Hello everyone, I'm Lazy Grouse and it's time for some more Crusader Kings 3 with the Prince of Darkness mod. And it's been a while since the last campaign and I was starting to get the itch to start a new one. And I was thinking maybe we play as a Malkavian or a Gangrel, but then I heard that there's been an update and they added playable werewolves. So of course we're playing as a werewolf. And it's gonna be pretty different from the vampire campaigns because, well, many reasons, but mainly because we aren't immortal and we're gonna have to make babies. But we are gonna get more into that when we get into the game, so first off, we're playing as Yvonne Hardrule, Queen of Fimble Winter. So we're playing as a viking werewolf, but what's the deal with werewolves in the world of darkness? The Garou, or werewolves, were made to defend the earth that they named Gaia from numerous forces that threatened to tear it apart. It's a struggle against nearly insurmountable odds, especially considering the rivalry between tribes. Considering themselves the ultimate predators, they are steeped in millennia-old traditions of bravery and renown. The Dark Ages are a troubled time for the Garou nation. Rampant growth of cities and their vampire puppeteers has pushed them on the back foot. Worse, a mysterious disease known, known as the Flaying Plague has recently killed a catastrophic number of them, forcing the survivors to retreat to the forest and fight for their very survival against their emboldened foes. Gaia needs you and no hardship can distract you from your sacred duty. So we're basically playing very violent environmental activists. But who is Yvonne Hardrule? Well, she's the queen of Fimble Winter, which is part of northern Sweden, and the Geta Fenris tribe are harsh warriors who embody the Norse ideals. They value battle prowess above all else, but also put great stock in personal honor and cleverness. A recent victory has been achieved by the tribe against the vampire known as Wotan, or Odin, but at great cost with most of the leaders and warriors slain during the legendary battle. The Get of Fenris are now led by young Yvonne, who has to quickly secure Scandinavia before the bloodsuckers can recover from this blow. Despite this victory against Wotan, you are in a weaker position than you look. You will have to consolidate your gains before rushing headlong to slaughter Odin's remaining followers. So, let's just hop into it. So I usually just skip past this window, but we're gonna read some of it because it has some good uh, summaries of how werewolves work. So let's talk about main werewolf mechanics. Werewolves have several key differences from other characters. First, they live in tribal holdings and mostly don't care or actively want to lower development to access their buildings. Those buildings cost prestige, as do most things in werewolf society and mechanics. While very strong fighters and quite enduring, werewolves are completely mortal and must plan for their succession accordingly. Each werewolf has a breed, describing who he was before his first change, and an auspice, describing under which full moon his first change occurred. These two determine which special lifestyles are available to each individual werewolf, and they gain experience in those by going on spiritual quests and minor decisions. And we can also raid, which is... Hur hooray! Uh, what about succession? Werewolves have companions and families that are named kinfolk, a trait in the mod any children born of a werewolf, kinfolk or a combination of both will be born a kinfolk as well. Then there is a chance that this kinfolk will go through the first change some, sometimes during puberty. This experience, uh, this experience is the first time that a kinfolk becomes a werewolf and if your heir happens to be a kinfolk and doesn't experience the first change, this will weaken your realm considerably as some buildings will be disabled and you will lose access to special lifestyles. While this will be crippling, you might still recover down the line with another werewolf generation if you planned ahead for this occurrence. So basically, we are gonna want a lot of prestige, because uh, prestige is gonna basically pay for everything. And uh, we're gonna try to have our, um, our heirs be uh, werewolves. So if we, if we have children that are werewolves, we're gonna try to have them be the heirs. So let's just... Uh, get into our stuff, have a look at our, well, places. We got County of Bitton, which is our uh, our uh, capital, and we have the burgeoning cairn of Fimble Winter Night, some, uh, some werewolf buildings that's giving us some money, and some garrison and levies and stuff. So, basically, what they were saying is, uh, as you can see, most of this costs prestige, and there's some pretty pretty decent ones, and I think we can't build these if we have too much development. So, like, this uh, development growth thing might be pretty good, because we don't want high development. We want nature to take over and just live in the wild and run around naked in the forest. But there's some really good ones, like Number of Nights, and, uh, like, if you played this mod or watched any of the previous campaigns, you know 
more nice is just really good. Although we start with only six, so we're gonna have to get some more of those, but we'll get those uh, eventually. It'll be fine. So we're gonna want to build some of those, but the ditchy buildings are also really good. It's gonna give us a bunch of levees, which aren't really like the best in Prince of Darkness because they're very squishy and uh, all the characters are very strong. So knights are much more important, but it's still good to have levees, even if it's gonna be hard to pay for them considering, uh, well, we're not gonna make that much money. But they all do basically the same thing with a couple of differences. So I kind of like the advantage one because, uh, well, it's gonna help our armies and we're gonna raid and fight a lot. And we get more army damage, which is also very nice. It's not a lot, but it's something. So I think we're gonna go for that. The dom domain tax isn't gonna be a, a lot either. Vassal tax contribution is, well, we do get 1.2, so that would be like 0.1 gold, which isn't bad, but it's not a lot. So I think I think I like the advantage just to make our our armies a little bit stronger. But let's have a look at us. We are honest, brave, and patient, and we're a skilled tactician. We are a homid, which um, is raised by born and raised by humans, because homid is well, it's human, and theurge. Which gives us a uh, learning lifestyle. So if we're ever going to want one of those basic ones, I guess learning is the one we're going for. And speaking of lifestyles, let's have a look at our lifestyles. And so we can get faster of this, but it's really slow. And we are mortal, so we're basically not going to get any of these. We get even less over here because, well, we don't have that 50% boost. But we're going to go with this homemade gift because... Well, because we are, I guess Homid is the, uh, who we were before we transformed, so we get the Homid here. But uh, we can't take Lupus because, uh, because of that, because we're not Lupus, we're Homid. So we get Persuasion, which will make us better at befriending and seducing people, which is good to have. We can commission artifacts without even having an Antiquarian, which is, it's fine if we have any money lying around, but... I don't see us having money for this in any time in the future. Well, maybe far in the future, but not right now. We have Divide, which is probably going to be our, well, our biggest use of piety. And I'll show you in just a sec what that does. So Divide is a character interaction we can do with basically any ruler. And it costs 150 piety. And it lowers Vassal Opinion by 50. So it's not anything like super impactful or super strong or anything like that. But we're basically not going to have that much use for uh, Piety anyway. So we might as well use it. And it might cause some rebellions and stuff. Which is going to help us a lot. If it happens. So it might just be that little thing that pushes them over the edge. So hopefully it can be useful. So let's have a look at our religion. Unrelenting Faith, which gives uh, all of our people some prowess, which is going to be really good. Faith Hostility Advantage, which is also going to be like really good anytime we fight, uh, well, any were no, not any werewolves, any vampires. Because all of their faith are hostile to us. So, that's good. We got Warmonger, that gives us... Well, people are going to like us less if we stay at peace for too long. So, it's basically the opposite of... Normal, when you fight too much, people are sick of, sick and tired of warring and all that, but we want to be at war as much as possible. And we also get a conquest causes belly. And blah blah blah, other things that I don't care about reading. We also have Grusel Festival, which makes it uh, a good thing to, to execute things. And we can hold a grand sacrifice that I don't know, I guess it's under decisions. Um, do we have a grand sacrifice here? I feel like we should have it. Maybe not. Okay, either way, um, I can't find it. I don't know how to do it, but we might figure that out. But what I wanted to show is we're male-dominated, which sucks because we're a woman. 
And uh, this means that, uh, well, we get a little bit of negative opinion because, well, we're a female ruler. And uh, we can't have concubines, so we, well, of course we can't have concubines, it would be hard, well, I guess it wouldn't be hard, but... Um, we can't be pregnant with multiple children, unless we have twins and stuff. So, I mean, a, a bunch of concubines wouldn't do much for us. But it would have been nice if, uh, if we were male in this case. Because then we could have had concubines and made lots of children. And that would help us fill out the champions and like our court and stuff. And get a bunch of alliances. But either way, we'll make do. We'll be fine. Um, we have uh, accepted lycan lycanthropy and most other things are criminal and shunned and blah blah blah. Oh, actually, do we have any holy sites? I haven't checked that. York, Uppsala, Pederborn, Ranaheim, and Königagurder. The hell is that? Oh, it's down there. That's why I can't pronounce it. <laughs> um... Also, our religion, no, not religion, our culture is Norse, so we have Ting Meat, which uh, basically makes a bunch of traits uh, popular. Get out of the way. We also have Malleable Invaders, which is going to be really nice, because uh, that that's going to make uh, creating hybrid cultures cheaper, both uh, like acceptance-wise and prestige-wise, so we're definitely going to want a, uh, a hybrid culture eventually, probably with Sami. Because they have, uh, well, they have winter soldiers and forest wardens and skir adapted skirmishing and stuff. Could be good to have. But I also like making the uh, hybrid uh, cultures because I, I think it's fun. We also have performative honor, which is really good. Because we get more knights and uh, other stuff. <laughs> you can read that if you want. But basically, we can, weak people are looked down upon and craven drains prestige. But we're probably... Hopefully not going to be that. We also have Northern Stories, which lets us uh, erect uh, rune stones, which is... It's cool. But I think... Um, there's a couple of... Uh, of uh, criteria you have to fulfill to be able to raise a rune stone. I think it's like... Someone, in, someone high up in your family died. Or you conquered something. Or a third... Actually, we can have a look at that. Raise a rune stone. We need recently deceased ancestor, or like one of these only has to be the thing. Uh, conquer territory or gain a rank, which I think is like kingdom rank. So if we go to, from kingdom to empire, we get to erect a rune stone, which is sweet. And basically, that's our thing. So let's have a look at our realm. We don't care about that. Uh, we need more champions. But we're going to get some. Um, our council is uh, pretty mediocre, but they're fine. We also have uh, very few courtiers. Most of these are guests. So, yeah, that's... We're going to have to get a lot more people in here. So we got some champions and, and just people to give land to and stuff. Uh, don't care about intrigue, don't care about factions. Okay, so let's have a look at the rest of our decisions. We got Berserkers of Gaia, which... Uh, despite a titanic battle that got rid of Wotan, his spawn still lurks in the south while the German leeches also make inroads into our lands. They must all be punished. So, we need to control Sweden. Oh. <laughs> uh, we need to control Sweden. But that's... It's not that big. We'll probably try to take Norway as well, maybe parts of Finland, and we'll see about Denmark. Well, at least we're gonna kick out Denmark from actual Sweden. Can't have that. Um, but the hard part of this is, well, the prowess isn't gonna be too bad, because, uh, well, we're werewolves. We can, I can get it above 40 right now if I want to, but we're not gonna do that, and you'll see later how. Uh, the Cairn of Fimble Winter in Britain must be fully built. This is the hard part. Because, um, you can see, Cairn of the Fimble Winter. It's a pretty alright building. It's nothing special. We get a little bit of renown, which is nice. We want a bunch of renown because we're basically, we basically, oh, we are working <laughs> towards obscure. So, yeah. But, um, it costs 4,000 prestige to upgrade and it takes 5 years. 
but that's just to level 2. To get to level 3, we need 6,005 years. So we'll see if we'll actually be, be able to finish this. Um, I would like to, but our main goal is basically to... Well, we're gonna take uh, Sweden and probably Denmark and kick out some of Denmark. And I think that's gonna be fine. What else? Um, I think that's about it. We can hold court, but I'm gonna hold off on that for now. Um, I think we could make a hybrid culture right now because of how cheap it is. Yeah, but we're gonna hold off on that because it costs a lot of prestige and we're gonna want some prestige for other stuff. Uh, did we start building? Hey, we did. Good for me. I remember to do stuff. So, we need a spouse. And lucky for us, we already have a soulmate and we get to choose ourselves who we marry. So, we're gonna marry this guy. But we're gonna lose 250 prestige by doing this. So, I don't think we're gonna do that right now. Because most of that is because he's unlanded. And we're over our... Uh, holding a domain limit anyway. Now, it's not that big a deal. I think it's like 20% per uh, negative. Everything is just negative 20% on everything in every holding for every holding you have over your limit. So basically we get, what would it be? 240% of our, <laughs> of stuff, so to say, over three instead of 100% on two. But I don't know if that makes sense, but that's weird math that doesn't make sense, but kind of makes sense. So, uh, Kitala only have small folk militia. Same over here. So, doesn't matter which one. I guess we'll give this away. Actually, which one likes us the best? They're both identical. So, we're just going to give it, give him Kitala. So, let's grant him... Kitala. There we go. Excellent. Now he's not unlanded. Now we can marry you without feeling shame. Well, only a little bit shame because uh, uh, he's not a very good house and he's a part of the pack. So, but that's fine. We marry matrilineal, so we actually have our family from our kids, and that's fine. Gonna cost a little bit of prestige, but that's a price we're willing to pay to marry our soulmate. The day after, all around Scandinavia, the Get of Fenris shout their recent victories against, against the hated Wotan, also known as Odin. But even though they know that this victory costed them way more than they could afford, with their best warriors and war leaders dead, dead and gone, an unproven leader has risen and Odin's, uh, Odin's Get is quickly rallying to the south to avenge their cursed god. Further east, the children of Gaia, of the Sept of the uh, White Sea, observe the situation concerned that this war might soon engulf them as well. Should they find new friends in nearby Russia, or put their full support behind the desperate war fought in the, by the Get of Fenris? I vote the second one, but that's not up to me, I guess. Their answer might change the fate of Scandinavian werewolves. So, do you want to be friends? Well, you don't like me much. He is afraid of me, I guess. Um, and we can't really ally, but maybe we can uh, marry off a child eventually and stuff. So we could start swaying you a little bit. Have you be friendlier. Very good. And he accepted, because I don't know why he wouldn't. Partly because, well, he has no leash. He loves us, literally. And we're soulmates, so of course he's gonna marry us. And oh, Warlord Anarid up Reese, my morsel, to think that I can embrace you openly now with blessings of both Gaia and the people around us. I am the happiest woman alive. Come here, husband of mine. Yay, we're married. Now get to making babies. Um, why can't we seduce you? Oh, I guess uh, he's constantly seduced. Right. Lady Yvonne, you were away in a mission in England when the climactic fight against Odin happened. How very convenient. While the brave warriors returned victorious, the cost was way too high. Too many ex experimented, um, too many experienced, I think it should be, 
Uh, experienced Fenrir and their devoted kinfolk died during the campaign. So many, in fact, that you were suddenly the most likely choice for the leadership among the remaining Jarls. You can't say it out loud, but you know that the situation is dire. An entire generation was lost for, uh, for in the end, little gain against a cursed spawn of Odin. You will have to rely on quick raids until the Fenrir has accepted their strength enough to resume the war. It's swear that this text, they say Odin over and over again, but earlier they've just said Wotan, so... Oh, whatever. Uh, but we get Lost Generation for 20 years, which uh, makes our men at arms more expensive. Raid speed is up, which is very nice. And levy reinforcement rate, rate is down, so we have to take care of our levies a little bit, but we'll be fine. We must lick our wounds. And I think we're gonna go and raid right away, basically. The Free State is pretty strong, so we're gonna stay away from them for now. These guys are incredibly weak. We can probably conquer them in no time. Which I think I I think we might do that. Just because it's incredibly easy. 16 gold loot as well. We I could also just go out and raid. Because uh, there's 70 gold there, there's 70 gold there. 27 gold there. Yeah, we can go and steal some stuff over here. We got 16 and 7. Okay, so maybe we just go here, go around, and then go home. Actually, how are you? Uh, maybe, yeah, we should be fine against that. So, let's uh, put up a raiding party. Because I think we've done everything. I don't think I missed to go through anything. Right, actually... The uh, Masquerade and Hunger meters have been changed to Gnosis and Rage. And they are basically more experience and basically better stats. We want lots of Rage and lots of Genosis. At least I think we want lots of Genosis. I haven't checked that much, but I've, I'm gonna assume that it increases and not decreases with Genosis. Because I don't know what Genosis is, like, lore-wise. But Rage, basically, well, it lowers our Intrigue. Oh no, our Zero Intrigue. We get Prowess, a bunch of, uh, like, health. We get very healthy from being angry. And a bunch of Natural Dread, which is nice. We get more stress, but that's okay. I don't know if that goes away with how ra High Rage. I don't remember exactly how it looks at Rage 5. But basically, we want High Rage. And, yeah, more experience. So, raiding party. That's what we were doing. So, let's put up you over there. Let's raise everyone. But our uh, men-at-arms are more expensive. So, actually... No, we want everything, I think. It's gonna be more expensive, but I don't want to get beaten. So, grab everything. And split you off. You're expensive. You're very exp Oh, that is actually <laughs> really expensive. But it'll pay for itself. So, yep, there we go. You're not raiding. Oh, right. I have to turn on raiding. There we go. Now we're raiding. <laughs> Pregnancy! Oh, that was really quick. But yay, we're pregnant. We're gonna have our first kid. A child is growing in my womb. My husband, Warlord Anarin Apries, will be proud. Look how proud this big doggy is. Uh, I wonder if we're gonna get a lot of cats like we have in all the other campaigns. I hope we get, like, dogs instead. Because that would make more sense. But we'll see. And we probably shouldn't go around on max speed. I keep making that mistake, like, early on in campaigns. And it just never works out. <laughs> Scrounger life. Dolza has become a permanent fixture of my court. An expensive one, actually. Um... And an expensive one. Actually, an ex... Okay, why does it say an expensive one twice? Either way, uh, she's there for every banquet, wolfing down everything in sight while complaining about how empty her own pantry is. You serve the best drinks, my lady, she says after downing another tankard of my finest important wines. You are the most brave, the most implacable, implacable, the best looking lady. She declares her hand extended for another loan she will never repay. She's an annoying waste of money, but her exaggerated antics are quite entertaining. Get this leech out of my way! 
Um, she's actually a pretty good diplomat. But she's a guest, so she's not even hired. Although, that's a lot of prestige. And we don't have a spy master because... Oh, right. I guess I married our spy master. And you got nothing. We have some that has some... Okay. Um, it's just five gold. I think that's fine. Um, oh, fire and blood. The settlement of uh, Jokmoke, an important stronghold in Greater Jokmoke, has fallen to my raiders. We have the uh, we have the run of the vast tracts of land and many of the quivering subjects and shining treasure of warlord Ludwig uh, Dimitri to choose from. The troops stand ready, awaiting my command to give them direction. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> oh my god, he's so ugly. Uh, well, he is a Nosferatu, but he looks like a shaved, like, gremlin. Like, not the slimy ones that's been eating after midnight and getting... and all that. But, like... Like the hairy ones that they shave. <laughs> that's how they look. But not cute. But, either way, um, we can capture a bunch of s skilled slaves for, for Biton. It will give development to Biton, so we don't want that. Bring me Bounteous Plunder. Ooh. Gain some prestige. We're gonna want prestige. Um, we've taken enough. No! Give me all of the stuff. Yeah, burn that shit to the ground. So, how much was that? 36? That's a good haul. Uh, it's just 9 over there, but I guess that's fine because we raid really quick. So, speed over there, because they don't seem to have any resistance, nah. And we're gonna have to start a war against them soon, because, uh, well, we are going to want to conquer stuff, otherwise people are gonna get mad. Finger bones of a war lady. A peddler in cloak with a dozen baubles and knickknacks soon into, the rattle into it rattles up to me. My lady, I have an artifact of grand illusion, which, uh, which you may con convince all you possess magical power. Uh, she brandishes a colorful fabric worn on very thin string. It appears dormant at first, but by manipulating the thread, one can affect the illusion the worm ha has come to life. Think of how this will impress the, the lords of, uh, of at court. So, we can get piety or get worm string artifact. Yeah, give me the, give me the artifact. Nice. Thanks, lady. So what is that? Oh, actually, we have a crown as well, which <laughs> we can be a tyrant, but that's a lot of uh, prowess. So heck yeah. Uh, attraction opinion. Hmm. Child opinion is nice, though, but we don't have a child yet. So but we will grab that later when we have some children. There we go. Get some more raiding. Hey. Did you steal my raiding spot? Or... No, wait. This is... You live here. <laughs> Never mind. Um, so, where are you going? Are you going out to sea? Yeah, you are. So, actually, stop and raid that first. Go over to Lufuter. Scrounge your life. Some months have passed since I decided to let Dolza continue her parasitic life at my court. I wasn't expecting anything more than her usual over-the-top tales of pover uh, poverty and ridiculous flourishing compliments. But recently, I've noticed that her stories are getting funnier, her rhymes sharper and her compliments more pleasing. She's getting better at being a suck-up. Both my courtiers and foreigner uh, guests are greatly entertained by her artfully crafted words. Could Dolza have found a useful calling? We're not gonna make her a... Oh, I thought this was gonna be a like make her, make her a jester because uh, jesters are expensive and I don't want them. But um, I bet you can do even better. Seventy-six percent, despite her best efforts, Dolza seems to have already reached her peak of her abilities, or she becomes an inspired book writer. Oh, that's fifty gold. Never mind. Uh, let's just go. I, I knew you were good for something. Hey, my son and heir. We got a son. First. Our firstborn is a son. So, let's just uh, whoop, 
click through that a little bit. Actually, do we have any? No, we only have daddy's name. So, I Ragnar, that's a good name. And we get a bunch of prestige. Excellent. So, let's keep... No, don't go through... Don't go across water. That's expensive. Or does it cost when you're raiding? I don't remember. Either way, um, we're gonna go and raid over there. We're gonna raid everything over here. Hey, we're pregnant again! <laughs> Shit, that was quick! A <laughs> child's growing in my womb. Look how proud he is. He's such a proud daddy. But we're... We didn't wait a minute. We just went for it. And, okay, we got lots of money, so let's... Let's make a pit stop at home. Now we have lots of money. So, we have... <laughs> everyone transforms. Yeah, so you can just... Um, I guess I should show that. Um, we can just shapeshift. And there's a bunch of... I think all of these are like wearables, but they have different effects. Like um, the... Uh, the Krenos form has a lot of prowess, but you lose the problems in stewardship. So you don't really want these while you're governing. But while you're fighting, these are good. Actually, the Glabro form seems like... Is this not a wolf... Or is this just a commander wolf? Uh, the Hispo form gives uh, intrigue and prowess and stuff, but lose all the other stuff basically. And prowess intrigue. So there's a bunch of different uh, combinations, but we're not gonna do that right now. Because we're gonna go home and be a little bit preggers. And we're gonna disband this. And I think we're just gonna start a war. So we can. Grab that. That's a lot of prestige. I don't want to pay that much prestige. Um, we could also use our piety on this. So I think we will. And I think we're just going to start with uh, Jokmok. And the Claire... Actually, let's let some time pass. So... Hey! A daughter! Excellent! Boodle is a fine name. Or... Sieg. Sieg is good. I just wanted our newly disbanded people to recover, basically. So, we can... What do you got? You got basically nothing, right? Yeah, 500 and most of that is rats. <laughs> Excellent. Just raise the local army. We don't need to spend too much money on this. Um, now, um, disband these as well, because they are expensive. There we go. Cheap army. Oh, and I wanted to spend our money on... Uh, actually, I should look for people with... Ooh, like this guy. With intrigue. That's what I was looking for. Grab him. We just got ourselves a spy master. Excellent. So, you can go away now. Um, we got her. She's... I mean, she's not great. She is a holy warrior. Which... Uh, that's pretty good, but this is a commander trait, right? Yeah, so it's only if she's a commander. But she is. They are the best we got. So, spend some money on them. That's fine. But that's gonna be good enough. And, yeah, that's mostly rats. How are your champions? Okay, we got way better champions, so I'm not worried at all. Um... Did you just... You just broke free. We're gonna fight you as well then. Although he's much stronger. But we got a lot of soldiers <laughs> available if we need to. So yeah, we're definitely gonna win this fight. Um, Who are you? You are... Yeah, you're the child of this guy. I don't care that we captured you. We're just gonna execute you. You're a vampire. I don't like you. And it doesn't really... We don't really have any difference depending on which one we do. So let's sacrifice her. Or him. Him. Yes, him. So now we need to fight a little bit more. But that's fine. Hey, our court grinder is zero. Excellent. Because we do want to... I want to finish this to get the loot. And uh, we still have people to kill. Hey... We're pregnant again. We 
we are just really like uh, we do not wait between pregnancies. We just we just gonna want to get to the next one right away. Oh, oh, new generation. The wolves population of your area has recently experienced a handful of fir first changes amongst them, as as is the duty of any self-serving tribe. You have been scouting for those lost pups and brought the most deserving home with you. After a time of adaptation need needed to teach those lupus ways of the world beyond their forest, they are now ready to become full-fledged members of the pack. So, we get a werewolf. He's pretty strong. He's got okay stats. We could give him some land, but yeah. He's a champion, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just want to still want to take that. And okay, I guess we were on max speed, so hey, another child. This is a great way to get prestige, though. So that's excellent. Um, so TK, that's good. So I guess we want to build some stuff, like oh, the money one is good. Cause uh, well, we are gonna need money, even though money isn't our main thing. But we are still going to have to pay our soldiers. So, enforce demand. Good, we grew. And we need to grant this to someone. Why? Oh, it's because someone is standing on it, probably. Oh, and actually, we are under attack. That's why. <laughs> okay, go and grab these guys. I didn't even realize. But yeah, we're going to have to go and kill them. And we'll get there in time, no problem. Actually, how are your stuff? Yeah, we have stronger champions than that. And we need to go and grab the rest of our champions. And we should be a defender here as well. There we go, and someone... Um, excuse me? Oh! Um... I guess they're allied to the Free States. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. Um, put a rally point there. Raise everyone. And get out of there. But we are getting out of there, so that's good. This isn't everyone. Where's the rest? We should have thousands. Oh, there's they are. There they are. Yeah, so you... Go and siege that. And uh, we'll see if we can grab some. Right, we should uh, definitely try to... Hey, he gets rowdy. That's a good one. Uh, but we should definitely educate our child. It's been so long since I played someone who has kids that I forget you need to... Oh, wait. No, you're too young to, for that. I guess it's when they get older. But uh, I guess it's also time to end this episode. So uh, we're going to finish this war in the next episode. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.